This show is sponsored by the Comics Shop. Enjoy the show. All right, g'day. Welcome back to another episode of Tuesday Chinwag. My name is Lee Chalker. I am the creator of the Australian independent comic book Battle for Bustle, published through the uh, Comic Studio system. And uh, tonight, the uh, Chinwag is uh, broadcast, live streamed across two channels. So just let me fill you in on both of those in case you haven't heard of them. We have ComX, and across the bottom, I should say, across that little yellow ticker, are the addresses of the two channels. So the first one is ComX. Now, ComX is three, um, I guess, seg seg sections. And uh, one is the community, and uh, that is of uh, like-minded people that enjoy comic books and uh, all things creative and art and uh, like getting together to learn and just talk and shoot the breeze and uh, meet, it, meet other like-minded people. Is also the live streaming side of things, which is uh, Chinwag, the Oz Comic Show, Friday Night Drink and Draw, and uh, Let's Make a Comic Book. It is also the Comic Shop, which is the sponsor of these shows, and the Comic Shop has over 100 Australian comic book titles in it. Now, it has a flat rate of $9, so that means you can buy one comic or you can buy 20 comics. You still only pay $9. Now, that's a bargain. Everyone can come in and sell their stuff in the comic shop. It's not just for comic studio comics, okay? And the other address we have is Aussieverse. Now, Aussieverse is a community of people that uh, are very passionate about comic books, very passionate about pop culture and uh, all things entertainment related to comic books. They do interviews with creators and artists, etc., in the field. They do uh, their own live streams. They do uh, haul videos, what they've read this month. They do a whole myriad of stuff. I believe they've got over about two, 300 videos. So there's plenty of things for you to check out. The best thing you can do to support both of those channels is like and subscribe them. Now, they're over YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. So just remember, like and subscribe them anywhere you can find them because the more likes and subscriptions, the more the tree grows and blossoms and the more people get to watch these shows, the more people get to see what's out there in Australian comic books, pop culture, and it's just damn entertaining to be around people that are like-minded, you know, so, you know, get on it. So tonight on Tuesday Chinwag is a gentleman that I have uh, just till now uh, got the pleasure of meeting and uh, we're going to get straight into it uh, with our who, what, where, when, why and how parts of the shop. All comments are welcome. Omnibo, beautiful mate. And uh, we're introducing this evening Mr. Stu Thornton. How are you, mate? I'm extremely well, coming to you live from Perth. So it's Very still good. daylight here. I don't know where it is everywhere else, but it's sunny and clear and daylight. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, pretty dark outside where uh, I, I'm uh, sitting at the moment, so I'm envious of you having some extra sunlight, um, you know, like... Uh, but we do like to keep it as light as possible, you know, because uh, let the light in where there's darkness. So, um, you know, like that's the best thing to do. And uh, thank you for everyone that's commenting so far. Do send them in. We'll get them, uh, get to you as best we can. If you've got any questions for Stu, join in. And good evening to Peter Lane, to Omnibo, to Dave Dye, and everyone that is watching. All right. So, Stu, mate. We're going to cut the fat, mate. We're just going to get straight into it, all right? Straight into it. Hit me. Who? Who? Well, who is Stu? Um, mm -hmm. I'm a cartoonist. I'm a dad, first and foremost. I've got two teenage kids. Uh, that's the most important thing in my life, um, although I don't tell them that because they they – they, you know, they get big heads and stuff like that. Um, other than that, I'm a cartoonist. I'm a graphic designer. Uh, I drew my first comic book at six years of age. Um, I've been working in at the media for the government, for ad agencies as a graphic designer, drawing cartoons, comic strips, um, courtroom sketch artist, 
uh, a whole lot of stuff. And now I'm bringing out my own comic book. So it's a lifelong dream. Uh, it's probably the the big thing that I always wanted to do. Um, and finally, I've got around to actually doing it. That is fantastic. I love um, one of the things, man, that I enjoy most about Chinwag is getting to meet people like yourself um, who are, you know, doing their first comic book after, you know, like having that ambition for such a long time, man. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to me. Um, it reminds Stu the dad Thornton. There you go, Omnibo. He's cutting sick of comments tonight, mate, old Omnibo. Hello, Nick May. We will try and have a great chat. Thank you for watching and your continued support. Um, yeah, because whenever I hear um, comments like that, man, from uh, creators such as yourself, I uh, I can't wait to um, see your reaction when you finally have your first finished comic book in your hands. You know what I mean? And um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that eventually with you, mate. Well, it's actually funny you say that because. Today, I printed my first preprint of my Outlaw comic well um, to have a look at, see how it looked, um, yep. you know, see if the font size was right, if it was reading well, things were in the right place, da 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 da, -da the colours. Um, yeah, so today's my first day of actually printing my comic book. So, um, well, you're well, seeing the you face feel? right now. How yeah, do you you're seeing that. Oh, um, mate, are you looking at it? <laughs> it's funny, you know, you, you, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, I think every artist goes through this, is it good enough? Is it, have I done enough? Have I, um, is, am I hitting my potential? Am I, am I, I don't, I, and still you look at it and go, geez, I could have fixed this, I could have fixed that. Um, I don't think any artist is ever actually happy with what they've done, um, which makes us better and better and better. Um, yeah. But Overall, if I hadn't have done it now, regardless, I'd be 150 and still not have done it. Uh, yes. I haven't. Uh, it's taken me this long to do it, and I'm 54 now. Yes. It's, uh, I, admittedly, I have been doing other arty things and cartoony mm -hmm. things. Finally, I've got around to doing this. This was always my priority too. So it was something I really took my time with to make sure I was happy at least to some degree with the final yes. product. Yeah, I, but man. other than that, I mean, as I said, I drew my first comic at six. Or I, I still remember it at school. I don't remember what the assignment was, but I was in first class and something about Dracula's castle. And I didn't even own a comic book back then, or I don't even think I'd read one. But mm -hmm. I knew that I loved this word and pictures together thing. And, um, yeah, it was probably very, very bad. But, but it gave me a love for, hey, let's do something else and something else and something else. And yeah, to where yeah. I am right now. Yeah, no, it's brilliant, man. Um, so, like, let's let's get back into six-year-old Stu, you know. And um, <laughs> you were saying you hadn't, um, you hadn't read a comic book that you're aware of or anything. Like, was it just something... I guess instinctual within you that you just decided that like I, I just I like drawing. Did you like drawing first? Did you want to be a writer? Like, do you remember back that far? Mm. Like, as to what was the initial spark? I think the initial spark was television, and um, I don't know if you guys remember 1960s Captain America throws his mighty shield and Iron Man and Thor when and Captain Samara. Captain America yeah. throws his mighty shield. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Those cartoons and George Reeves Superman just gave me this yeah. love for, for for superheroes, but also for the animation side and the cartooning. And yeah, uh, yeah, I tried to draw. I don't think I, you know, I was any better than any of the other kids at school, but um, I just loved doing it. And so, I, yeah, I couldn't tell you what prompted me to do it, but it was something that I remember doing and I just continued on with it. So um, by, the, by the time I was in um, the end of primary school, I'd, I'd um, drawn a history comic book that the teacher then produced and gave out to the rest of the class. So yeah. it was something that I just knew I wanted to do and it was, you know, I, I think it's like any artist, you don't, and I struggle calling myself an artist even now, um, but it's like any artist that um, you just have this 
desire to create. And yeah. it, no matter what it is, uh, every single day I've either got to be doing graphic design or cartooning or um, caricatures, comic books. I, 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 it's sort of like my day isn't complete until I've made something and created something. Yeah, yeah, that's um, Nick May. Fun fact, Stu and I were both born in September of 69. Yeah, we're, we're like brothers. Yeah, Twins. yeah, right. Yeah. yeah I'm Danny DeVito, see. though. Oh, I was going to say, I can see the resemblance. So, you know, like, yeah. uh, in fact, there you go. I, I can see, you know, there was a similarity there. I couldn't quite work it out, you know, um, but thank you. Well, Nick. that's terrifying, yeah. really, isn't it? But, um, yeah. <laughs> but I do remember also what it, what got me. It's funny, you know, um, I, went, I went to hospital when I was a kid. I would have been in, you know, 10 or 11, um, and that was only for appendix. It was nothing severe. But my uncle bought me an Iron Man comic, and I still remember Iron Man 149 against Doctor Doom, and yeah. I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, Bob Layton was the artist; he's so clean with his art, and yeah. I, I, it was just fantastic. And then uh, a few years later, I had a friend at high school who was collecting Captain America and Wolverine. And that um, shout out to Justin, thanks, mate. You got me into this. Um, Good man, Justin, yeah, so, I love you. Yeah, yeah, good on you, Justin. You got me into it, and I um, uh, started collecting Iron Man again. Uh, back yeah. in those days, nobody had any idea who Iron Man was, none of my friends. Yeah. Um, nowadays, everyone knows who Iron Man is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but back yeah, in those yeah. days, yeah, I just collected it and collected it and traced it and drew it, and, yeah, and uh, it just gave me this love for comic books, which yeah. I, haven't, I haven't bought one. I probably only bought a handful of comics in the last ten years, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I've still got probably got a couple of thousand in the in the lounge room in pride of place in the lounge room. Uh, yeah, right. Life's mm. Yeah, yeah. No, I. Um, it's did you now? Bo Omnibo sent out a little um, comment there saying that you were both. Uh, you know, born in the summer of 69 and, and uh, Brian Adams wrote a song about you. So, you know, there's another fun fact. You know, <laughs> uh, whether he did directly write it for you or not, who cares? No, he right did. Now, he did. So, you know, yeah, we're going to run yeah. with that, man. Thank you to Brian. Yeah. Thank you for both to, to pointing that out. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, have um, some claim to fame. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, it's like just even if it's just a thread hang on to that sucker man you know like, you know, <laughs> that's what i reckon it's uh you know claim it you know you might never get it back just for that moment man you know that's um, it with um like so you've got your appendix out you you're given an iron man you know comic now the person that gave you the iron man comic was there a specific reason why they chose Iron Man or was it, you know, like anything I there? The, I think it was just one of those, you know, karma, you know, those, um, one of those things that fate or something. He was my yeah. uncle and uh, I think yeah. he just saw the first comic in the shop and said, yeah. that'll do. And it just happened to be an absolute masterpiece, really, that that comic mm. book and, you um, uh, so, yeah, I fell in love just straight away with it. And yeah. the artwork, you know, the Bob Layton, I don't know if you know Bob Layton. but I know who Bob Layton art, is. Huh? Yeah, it's sensational. Um, him and John Byrne, those two mm -hmm. really just right, made me want to draw. Just yeah. these guys are great. And, and so did that Justin guy I was talking about before. He was drawing and I thought, well, if you can do it, I want to be doing it too. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that was high school. Every weekend we'd, well, I brought up in Sydney, uh, I was brought up in Sydney and um, we, every weekend we'd travel into the city and go to a place called King's Comics. I don't know if you mm -hmm. guys remember that and and, and uh, Comic Kingdom and another one down the road in George Street called The Land Beyond Beyond and you just spend, I don't know where we got our money from to be honest with you, my mother must have been funding us, but uh, we just rack and touring, mate, and the teenage, yeah, that's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And um, as I got older and older, you know, I still collected comics throughout my teens. Yeah. And I remember once I went to uh, King's Comics and um, in Sydney 
and they said to me, you, you draw, you should go along to this meeting every, at, at the Surrey Hills pub every um, once a month. On a, on Are a you going to tell me you turned up at the Yugal pub a couple of times, man? I, yeah, with Jason Paulos, who was around the same age. Wow. And so we were there with, with um, Steve Carter, Bodine America, and these guys, yeah. it was like, wow, I'm meeting legends. Um, yeah, yeah. I remember Steve Carter said to me, never be afraid, and this was a great advice looking back, never be yeah. afraid to use too much black. And I yeah. thought, wow, okay, black, if in doubt, black it out. That's, uh, yeah. that's what I've been doing with my comic books. Um, and that was Steve Carter who taught me that uh, yeah, yeah. 30 years ago. But, yeah, I used to go to that pub. I don't even remember what pub it was, to be honest yeah. with you. I know it was in Surrey Hills and it was yeah. once every – it was supposedly a, a cartoonist meeting, but really it was a night where everybody got together and drank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and hopefully didn't spill beers on the pages that they brought in to uh, show to everyone their ideas and yeah, stuff like that's, that. You know? That's funny because I did get a big talking to about bringing original art in and they said, never bring original, original art, you know, like, <laughs> okay, learning yeah. curve at the age of 18, 19. Yeah, yeah, it'd be soggy when it went home. But if there's anyone out there, Ben Sullivan, hello, Ben, how are you, buddy? And... Uh, G'day, it's Stu from Ben. Good man, Ben Sloppy Tune. We have three pickles to beat today. Yes, Alex, we spoke about that. Stu, we, we, we'll see how the challenge goes, mate, but I did throw it out there. Land Beyond Beyond was a weird place. Best prices in town, though. So Alex is a... Yeah, uh, it was. Too, mate. It was. It was hidden yeah. down a little hallway down in George Street, so you had to oh. sort of find the place. Um, yeah, one of those was, sneaky little arcade comic book places, you know, like, uh, yeah. you know, just off the off the beaten track. But if anyone um, of the uh, Legend Brigade is out there watching Chinwag tonight uh, that went to Yugle Club back in the day, let us know what pub it was so we can fill in the details because that would be really cool. Um, it's it's a beautiful story to say to you know to think that you were there with all of them, man, because um, they're all good dudes too, and I've had the pleasure of meeting them all, and um, and they're still going strong, man. They're still going strong. So yeah, uh, I I didn't I didn't keep in contact with any of them, but I remember once um, Jason Paulos and I went over to Bodine America's apartment. Yeah, and there was a whopping great um, carpet python or something in the place, <laughs> and I'd never. And being from Sydney, people just didn't have stuff like that, you know. And so I thought, wow, this guy's completely out there, and you know, he's got you know something like something out of Adam's family to me. Um, yeah, yeah. Back in those days. Wow. Well, there's there's Gary Challoner. G'day, Gary, and uh, he said the Chippendale, Chippendale Hotel. 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 So there you go. See the. The idea of um, Bo having a giant snake um, just <laughs> cruising around his lounge room doesn't shock me because I've, I've uh, met Bo, uh, you know, a few times on live streams and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, um, I, I, I think that, you know, if, with his house decor, you know what I mean? Um, I'm surprised. <laughs> uh, I'm not surprised at all there was a snake, uh, maybe some throw pillows and varying other things but you know we won't go into too many details there because that could be a pickles moment <laughs> um and from alex we've got the yugle for a bit was the strawberry hills um hotel and this was 1999 mm -hmm. to 2002 era of that would have been it that would have been it yeah thank you that would have been and around 99 i reckon Omnibo, what was that? Omnibo, something about you've got a giant snake, butter ching, get out of here, Omnibo. <laughs> you know, you know. Jeez, mate, come on, keep keep it real. It's like, come on, we're talking comic books, we but we can keep it, you know, in a reality based scenario, man. Give yourself. A <laughs> it's because yeah, uh, comic books are firmly based in reality. Oh, absolutely, man. You know, yeah. like I, I'm often known to uh, jump in a, um, you know, like big iron suit, mate, and go off to work, you know, every, uh, every day, mate, you know. I mean, that's just the neighbourhood I live in, man. You know, you, you got to pay to, you know, have a hazmat suit on to walk outside, you know, like get attacked by things, magpie take your eye out, you know what I mean, like stray cats, mm -hmm. you know, like just, you know, it's, it's just that's just getting to the car, you know, let alone getting down the street. But anyway, I digress from there. So when... um. 
when when you were having your beers and stuff back in those days, man, like you would have been learning a whole heap, eh? You know, like uh, just. Oh. I was in total awe the whole time. Mm. These guys, as far as I was concerned, were like gods. Um, these were my heroes. Um, yeah. You know, and and they bring up names like Chaloner and DeVries and 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 I and I wow. You know, I can't believe. Pinch myself. I can't believe I'm sitting amongst these people. Yeah. And, and then to see, you know, Jason Paulos, how he's gone over the years. Yeah. Um, from where he was in the same boat as me and. We, we, our careers went in completely different directions. Um, yep. I, I went into the media and so newspapers and mm -hmm. um, he obviously continued on with comic books. So now yep. here I am coming back again into the comic book land, which is oh. sort of, you know, if I had a dream job, it would be mm -hmm. to draw Aussie comics. And that's, yeah. that's it, you know, like a dream job. But uh, back in the day, too, I used to collect front pages of newspapers. So I've got copies of the Titanic, World War I, um, the bomb being dropped in Hiroshima. Um, yeah. I've got copies of all these front pages. Um, and it was just such a big wow, 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 the front pages. I found myself years later creating front pages. So that would have been my second best job. So I'm lucky yeah. enough to say, hey, I've... I've been lucky. I've, I've, I'm being able to do the two dream jobs. Oh, that, um, man. I've yeah. always wanted to do. Wow. Not too many people can say that when you look back at things, man. You know, when you have those moments of reflection, you know, like uh, that, um, you know, headlining and front pages of newspapers, drawing comic books, meeting all these people and stuff like that. Because I'm assuming that... Um, with you talking about Australian comics and, and meeting the dudes at the Eagle Club and, and, the, and stuff like that, that um, while you were collecting uh, Iron Man, et cetera, and enjoying Bob Layton and uh, John Byrne, you were obviously also picking up copies of Australian comics back in the day as well. What, um, yeah. what of those comics sticks out in your mind, man? Like uh, Eureka. Yeah. Um, uh, Southern Squadron, number one. Yeah. That was yeah. the one that really I thought was awesome. Um, and I believe they're coming out again, aren't they? Is, is Southern yeah. Squadron, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Southern Squadron's yeah. come so, back out um, through Reverie, I believe, man, and they're doing crossovers from memory with uh, uh, Torn and different characters and creating a whole, like, modern version of them uh, currently and stuff. And... Uh, one of the artists that, um, uh, well, man, two of my three mates of mine are, you know, like got their, you know, like helping out there, Spedzi and Ben Sullivan who said g'day and um, and Hayden Spurrell are, uh, you know, and Tad, there's a Dark Nebula, you know, coming back to yeah. pumping out stuff as well at the moment and, you know, being as popular as ever and, um, uh, you know, like uh, Adventure Illustrated and, uh, man, there's, there's lots of stuff happening at the moment. So in a, in a, in a weird way, Stu, you know, like you sort of came in, um, you know, like at the time where everyone was pumping, there was a bit of a hiatus for a bit. You went off on, you know, your career path and that and followed dream number two, you know what I mean? Like and now that you've had an opportunity to come back to dream number one, everyone back in the day back then is like bringing comic books out at the same time as you're about to bring out your comic book, man. So, you know, like that, you like know, uh, depending on how you look at it, I would think that that's a pretty special, um, pretty special occasion, man. You know, like uh, uh, right. yeah, yeah. I it's reckon huge. so good on you, dude. Yeah, it's exactly. huge. I mean, I'll be, I'll, don't you worry. I'll be grabbing all of those new ones too to add them to mm -hmm. the um, the collection. I think I, I even got one that Gary Challoner did. Uh, years, I, I only just found it the other day. The Olympians, and I think it was made in in the United States, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, I only just found it the other day and went, oh, wow, I've got this. So that's that's pretty cool too. But there were so many Australian artists that were really grabbing me back then. Um, as I said, my love was Marvel and yeah. DC, DC to some degree. But I yeah. almost I followed artists, I think, just as much as I followed any particular characters. So, yeah, yeah, yeah the John Burns, yeah. the, the Bob Laytons, 
um, Mike Zek. And then when Todd McFarlane came in, I was blown away by that. And, yeah. Um, you know, you try and I, steal um, a little bit for your own art here and there. But uh, somebody told me once the first half of an artist's career is you're throwing things in. I'll just learn how to do this. I'll do that. And I'll throw that in. I'll throw that in. And the last half is taking stuff out until you've got this bare bones basic. You almost go back to basics and um, simplified. So, um, whoop. Yeah, um, so simplify it. Um, where I am now. So my comics are a lot more basic than what they were uh, yep. 20 years ago when I was putting in a lot of cross hatching or whatever. I've taken all that out now and stripped it back to yeah, yeah. just really easy storytelling. Well, you found you, you're feeling confident and you found yourself, mate. You found your voice with your artwork, you know, like uh, and your identity. Uh, I guess that's what happens because, I mean, from my perspective is um, a lot of those names that you just mentioned then, um, for me, Mark Silvestri was a really huge influence on me. Um, still, like to this day, love his work. Um, but I, when I was younger, man, oh, Mark Texera, A.B. Assaltes, um, the dudes from Ghost Rider and stuff, like um, I used to very much draw very much like them and used to, and but then slowly over time just, much like yourself, man, you know, like you just lose a bit of that or that curl becomes a bit more yours or, you know, even weird things like you find a, a thickness of pencil that changes it or, you know, you some people like drawing with paces, you know, some people like drawing with lead pencils and that sometimes changes mm -hmm. things and yes, you find other inspirations. I, I went, um, I grew up in a family that while well, comics uh, with my dad was a huge um, influence on me. I was also very lucky that um, the first art, when was I? Probably, probably about five or six. And my, yeah, that'd be about right. And my grandma was cleaning out a cupboard. And um, I didn't know anything about my granddad. My granddad um, was a returned veteran from the Kokoda track in Papua New Guinea. He spent three and a half years over there. And, um, and they'd send him back like two was over, but he just kept going back, you know, like that's that he was wanted to, that's what he wanted to be, you know, um, and where he wanted to be. But what he did was he used to paint and um, do sketches. And I didn't know anything about this because when he came back, like at that stage, I, I'm assuming that things like um, uh, PTSD and, you know, like traumas of such, you know, nature weren't really a, a, a relevant thing, you know, but he used to draw and paint and he did that in the war and he brought, brought back a whole heap of artwork and they were amazing pieces that I first saw and some were on giant pieces of board that uh, were painted versions of all of the aircraft that were used in Papua New Guinea. Um, you know, by the Americans and such. There were sketches of him and his mates sitting under trees and um, the the volcanoes in Papua New Guinea, you know, like, um, you know, on fire and jungle settings. And, and um, man, some just, I, I, I'm hoping someone in our large family on that side still got some of those, but um, they were pretty mind-blowing as a kid. So from that, you know, I had comics and then I had this. And then I veered off into painting. So I found that over time, like all of my melting pot of influences had just come into like, you know, like, like bleh, there you go, you know, and um, and sounds the same as you, man. You know what I mean? Like you just find your way and stuff like that, you know. There's no right or wrong to artwork, man. It's just what makes you feel no. wrong with expressing yourself any way you choose, you know. As long as you're not hurting people. Don't hurt people, but just keep drawing <laughs> and stuff, you know. I'll try no <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, that's it. Um, I, I, and I've, I've spent a lot of time doing comic strips and, yeah. um, you know, political cartoons for the paper and and whatever else. Um, I, I've lucky enough to, you know, I was, I've got it here actually. Um, you get the front page of the of the newspaper um, with a cartoon up in the Northern Territory. I found myself. I ended up travelling Australia when I was 26. A mate of mine said, "Let's, what are you doing?" I said, "Well, live my life, nothing." 
uh, he said, well, let's travel Australia. So we did it for a few years and we traveled yeah. around doing everything from fruit picking to I used to clean the public toilets at five o'clock in the morning Ooh. as a job. Um, so we did anything we possibly could. We used to uh, busk and try and get some money. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what, what is like busking? Like, what what did you do? With you know, like you're playing get guitar. Going bus. Yeah, yeah, right. You're singing yeah, classic, man. You know. Yeah, no, I'm not very good at it. No, no, I've been. I started playing guitar when I was about 14. So I, I just taught myself how to play guitar, and you know, I can play chords and try and drown my voice out with the chords and yeah, yeah, people yeah. usually pay you to shut up. So you ended up making some money that way. Yeah. Um, but then I found myself in Darwin and uh, I was only going to stay there three months. I stayed there four years, went back to Sydney, thought Darwin's my home, went back there again and stayed there for another 16. So about yeah. 20 years in Darwin. And yeah, at that yeah. stage I got a job with the NT News, which yep. is the newspaper up there, of course. And I got to do my own... And I got to do the front pages, but I got my own cartoons on there too. Well, ah, we there? And so, you know, that was the chief minister and the um, and the treasurer at the time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I got to do my own political cartoons and put them on the front. Courtroom sketch artist, which was at times really freaky, also because you you've got you don't go there for somebody who's just stolen a loaf of bread. You're going yeah. there because you've got murderers, um, yeah. you know, and um, it's a real story. And yeah. um, some of them were, uh, do you remember the Falconio murder, uh, the Peter Falconio got killed or yeah. he disappeared in, in the Northern yeah. Territory and it was yeah. Bradley Murdoch apparently who's, who killed him. I had to go yeah. draw Bradley Murdoch in prison and he's behind this perspex, oh, he wasn't in prison, he was in court, and he was behind this perspex wall with a security guard there and there's no way in the world he could have got to me. But... I'm not usually intimidated by people, but him looking at me, knowing that I was drawing him, I'd sort of go, you know, look, he's freaking me out. You know, he he, yeah, yeah. he really burnt into my soul, if you know what I mean, his eyes. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he was freaky, yeah. And yeah. Some of the other ones, you, you just think they didn't affect me at all. But him, he um, something about him just... Yeah, just sort some of, bad juju coming off that dude, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard, and I don't know if he's, he's, he's been found guilty, but the body's never yeah. been found. And I don't know where he is or not, but uh, from what I hear being in the Territory, whether he's guilty or not, he probably deserves to be there apparently. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, scary man, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just a bad dude all around, yeah. like, you know. Yeah, he's not running for mayor anywhere, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, when, when you're up in the NT, um, like what else, like what was it about the Northern Territory? Because you're not the first person that um, I've met in my life that went to Darwin on a holiday and suddenly, <laughs> you know, like, they've never come back, you know, like and uh, they, they that were, is, they that is a... Say, um, yeah, it's like a wild land sort of thing. And if you like a bit of action and adventure and stuff, you know what I mean? Like that's as good a place as any to, you know, like find it. Yeah, definitely. It, um, particularly back in 96 when I first got there, it was yeah. um, it was hard, well, parts of it were half the size of what it is now. Yeah. I mean, although the Darwin's only small, the Darwin itself has only got 120,000 people in it. Yeah. The Northern Territory's only got 250,000, so it's a very small community. Mm. But you've got a lot of the big city luxuries, you know. You can still go to the movies. You can still, you know, you've got McDonald's. You've still got da 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 da, -da shopping centres. You know what I mean? So it's still got um, the the big city luxuries, but it's, it's still a very much a small town and a community. Um, and I think I fell in love with that. That was sort of my people were a bit rebellious, a bit... Um, and back in those days, too, you had mandatory sentencing. So if you stole a Mars bar, two weeks in jail. If you, it was, it was, you didn't screw up, you know, like, um, unfortunately, those laws have been watered down a lot and our crime is rife. Um, yeah, but yeah. back in those days, in the 90s, it was, um, yeah, a different place and it was really, really appealing. Great lifestyle. It was all about 
during in Darwin during the dry season, there's no rain at all, and it's yeah. just thirty degrees every day. So you got yeah. this perfect weather for six, seven months of the year, absolutely mm. brilliant. But then you got the wet season, and two months of that's called the build up, mm. and it's just hot and sweaty yeah. and no rain, high yeah. humidity, hundred percent humidity, thirty five yeah. degrees. Yeah, and then the rain sounds is, like downpour. Woo! You know, like yeah, yeah. Feeling, you know, like. Thank yeah, you. well, uh, during my during my uh, trips, I did stay in Townsville for a while. Well, yeah, yeah, I did stay in Townsville. I yeah, Cairns also uh, yeah, couldn't yeah. find any work, so I left there. But um, yeah, yeah, it's it is very much like Townsville. It's the same sort of deal. Um, yeah, yeah, Darwin's actually a thousand kilometres higher than than, than Cairns. So it's yeah. we were closer to Bali than we were anywhere else in the country, you know. So it was, um, which wasn't bad. Ninety bucks over in Bali. Yeah, I remember right. one year we went over to Bali. I went over to Bali just to buy the kids' Christmas presents. Oh, um, true. Because it was cheaper to do that than buy them here in Australia. <laughs> so just so hop over to Bali, get some kids ducking presents. over to Bali to pick your toys up, have a few schooners and stuff, dance Friday night away. I'll be back by Sunday. Presents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, I think the bin tanks went down quite well. That. The bin tank, uh, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Excuse me. laughs> the, um, <clears throat> I tell you, I don't know if it's this way in the southern states, but, man, there was a period there where it's like every third person had a bloody bin tank, sing a singlet on, you know, with the, like they'd be cruising around. Anywhere you go, you could be driving, I don't know, out west in the middle of, so and so nowhere, you know what I mean? And the hitchhiker bin tang, you know, like like singlet on, and you'd be like, you know, like what is it with yeah. this thing? You know, like yeah, that could have been me. I I did get a couple of I must confess, get a couple of bin tang singlets over there. <laughs> Even got a hat with bin tang on it. So yeah. Oh yeah, yeah what's some... that now? The gardening hat, or you, you know, is that nah. what you do? It actually just sits there gathering dust. So, yeah, right. yeah unfortunately, yeah, no. Yeah, don't, well, it might don't be wear the hat now. You might have to, like, spark her up, mate, you know, like uh, get it reliving, man, you know, like look at my yeah, well, hand. Well, it's one of those Terry Towling ones. So it looks <laughs> – it's pretty It's pretty appalling, really. But um, oh, man, I might, I I might wear it. Off spot for Terry Towling, Stu, you know what I mean? A Terry <laughs> Towling hat, man, like, you know, like – don't get me wrong, I'm not going to dinner in a Terry Towling hat, but if I was out with someone camping or something and I was like, oh, I need a hat, and they threw me a Terry Towling hat, man, I'd whack that on my scone with pride, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, Particularly if it's got Big Tang written all over it, eh? Oh, mate, you know, I might question myself there, but, you know, I might be one of those third people just for a moment, just to, I guess, you know, just to feel what it was like to, you know, like wear some bin tang clothing, man. You know what I mean? Like just to, I don't know, like absorb what it was like. So, Stu, the next time you look at that Terry Towling bin tang hat, man, you think of me, all right? Like I, that might scare you now, man, but like not in that like, like, like Alcarino type way, I hope, but, you know, like, um, you know. I'll never, probably never look at it the same way again. Oh, mate, you know. Thank you. You know, um, see, we've changed bin tang, terry toweling hats for you forever. You know, that's that's fantastic. You know, it's um. I speaking of hats, dude, I'm gonna grab a prop because I don't know why. I have a hat, and it's a hat I've had for a long time. The hat came to me. It didn't come to me like someone flicked it off at me at the side of the road. It hit me in the head. You know what I mean? But I was in a shop. And my old uncle in Gundagai said to me once, he's he a slow talker, he's a cool dude, man. And his name was Pat. And he had a hat, and I really liked this hat. And he's like, you know, everyone everyone should have a hat. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, Pat, where do I get a hat? <laughs> it sounds like I'm writing a kid's book saying this. Um, and it's like, yes, I'll take you down the road and we'll get you a hat. And I was like, okay. And he said, you'll find the hat. Or the hat will find you and i'm thinking like what is this you know like gunda guy you know like magic or you know wizardry that's about a hat finding me or something lo and behold man i went into that shop and i found a hat now i don't have the hat that i've been wearing for 15 years to show you right now but what i do have is a hat found me 
about three weeks ago. And I don't know what it was about this hat, but I had to have it. And you know, you're talking bintang hats, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one up at you. I'm gonna go the pineapple hat, you know? Like I like it. It's just, you know, it's refreshing, it's good. I tend to find sometimes I like to put it on, it brings me comfort. But anyway, that's enough of the of uh, you know, like what disturbs me, Stu. <laughs> so <laughs> You know, hey, Actually, I had the found the hat that found me was my um my many years ago. It was one of those little stalls in the middle of a shopping center, and they're airbrushing stuff on a caps, and you mm. buy them for twenty five bucks or whatever. And I've actually got it here, well, not far away. Oh, look and at us! And yeah. I got a fourth monkey, a fourth oh. monkey cap. So oh, I got my well, I got my monkey yeah. put on a cap. Somebody else did, and I've, oh, I've, yeah. I've probably only worn it four times ever, and that would have been 10, 12 years ago, I suppose. Oh, I love Otherwise, it. he lives on he lives on his. He lives on my yeah. um, my lamp. Oh, look at you go. <laughs> hey, who knew that we were so close and, you know, like had such a an affinity and, and, and weird fixation with headwear man, you know? Oh, yeah, Nick May, the infamous pineapple hat. It, you know, it, it's something. There's no doubt about that. Um, uh, you know, it, it, I don't know, man. It just, you know, I can't explain. You know, some things you just need in life, pineapple hat, you know, your fourth monkey hat, you know, these things just happen, man. It's the flow, you know. Don't force these things. They just happen. Um, and you just got to, you know, take it when you get it. So... With your with your time in in Darwin and the Northern Territory, had you been trained with artwork and stuff, or self taught, and with getting a job to do the cartooning and things like that, you know, was there any scholastic prerequisites, or was it just a Johnny on the spot, you know, have a beer with the right bloke? Because that's how it is in some of those little places and then next thing you know come in monday bring your pen and paper you know we'll see how you go it's it's funny how um life just throws things at you and they're usually curveballs yeah and um you don't even realize at the time what's going to happen in the future um when i was younger i would have been 21 i yeah. um went and signed up for graphic design and uh, in sydney at um yeah, at school, uni, TAFE, college, whatever it's called. And yep. I did graphic design. And um, at the end of the first year, they failed me with a D for being too cartoony. So from being, I, I just, I just, I knew what my strength was. So I just applied it with everything I did with graphic design. I then went the second year and I thought, okay, no more cartoons. And um, unfortunately, being out of home at that age, the cost, I dropped out of graphic yep. design. Didn't touch it again for years and years and years. And yep. um, I did end up start cartooning though. Uh, and I started um, the cartoonist for St. George Yellowwara Rugby League team um, back yeah, in the right. year 2000, 2001. So I was drawing a comic strip for them for their newsletter and for online. And then I um, ended up in Port Hedland at the top in Western Australia and I was cartoon a cartoon strip, comic strip for them. Um, yep. for the paper there. Um, but that was really the extent of everything I did arty if, um, for a lot of years until I was in Port Hedland. I was doing manual labour and yep. I crushed the bottom three discs in my back. Oh yeah, It put yeah. me out of action for a year. Yeah. Uh, six months I couldn't walk. So I just yeah. sat there and drew. Yep. And the, um, the rehab company said, what can you do then sitting behind a desk? I said, I don't know, graphic design. So yeah. they got me a job in a graphic design studio. Yep. Um, I learned how to use InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop yeah. um, on the job. So you just learn as you go, which yeah. then progressed to the newspapers. So um, uh, where I made my way up to the creative manager of the art department, uh, got made redundant. They then called me back. I went back again. For another seven years, they then made me redundant again. So was, um, <laughs> they weren't sure whether they wanted you or not. Ah, get out! Come no. back. <laughs> it took them. It took them ten years to figure out they didn't. So um, <laughs> more fool them. But it, it, um, 
I ended up being the last man standing. Uh, it was there was another artist. Uh, his name's Louis, and um, gee, he was good. He, he, he still is. He's he's a far better artist than I am. Far better designer. And uh, we were the last two, and it was it was good because he was always a step ahead of me. So yep. it, I'd be striving to do better and better and better, and learning yep. from him. Um, yep. As a result, though, he thought, "Bloody hell, this guy's on my, you know, coattails. I've got to do better. I've got to do better." So oh. the two of us sort of pushed each other along to do a better job and a better job all the time. It yeah, was good, cool. but um, yeah, the ten years at the paper. Um, the, the role, because of the redundancies around the country with newspapers, it, it ultimately happened that I wasn't just doing the Northern Territory papers, but I was doing the front pages for Toowoomba, Townsville, Cairns, yep. Geelong, Gold Coast, and uh, Hobart. So you've got three papers a day I was doing, the front page, back page, any graphics on the inside. No wonder um, you didn't get any time to bloody draw comic books, man. No, you didn't bother. You, know, so you, you, you seriously, by the end of it, I was flat out. And, yeah, yeah. Um, but even before that, the, the newspaper has a, I used to say it was like being on a game show. Okay, you've got um, a graphic to make or a cartoon to draw or whatever. Um, it's got to look professional. It's got to be fresh. It's got to be new. It's got to be clean. Yeah. Time starts now. You've got 20 minutes. And so because in 20 minutes' time, there's another job and then there's yeah. another job. And there's another job. So it, um, it, it was a great learning experience for all those years too. It taught, it taught you how to work quickly and yep. um, produce and, and and work hard, which... Well, that, that'd um, be where your cross-hatching went, eh? You know what I mean? Out the door. Oh, yeah, that, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> like someone gave me a 20-minute deadline, I'd be like, yeah, no. You know, like I'll walk myself out the door. You know what I mean? I'll even pay for the cab home. Don't worry about it. Catch you, not catch you. <laughs> well, basically everything is like that. I, I, I think I'd, I'd do a front page in half an hour. You know, yeah, right. ultimately just put it all together. But I think it's like anything. You do it over and over again. Yeah. You just get quicker at it. Um, yeah, yeah. You just know what you're doing, and bang, 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 and you throw it together. It's almost like you've got a a routine or a, a template in your head. Da, da, yep. da, da, I know what I'm doing. Um, Did you have because yeah. I, I this when when you were given you know your 20 minute job? Did they give you like a? I need a man standing. He's arguing with a the lady. They're outside of a courtroom. Did they give you anything like that, or was it just like I need a cover? Um, hit it. You know, like were you given any prompts or anything? Different different editors give you different prompts. Some of them would actually draw it out as a little um, mud map, you know, a little yep. thumbnail sketch, and you'd just recreate that into something. Others, um, particularly after doing it for so long, the editor at the paper that I was working at, the one I worked directly with the most, um, particularly after years, he just gave me the freedom to run with it. And yeah, right. he'd say, okay, basically this is it. Go for it, and yeah. I and I produce whatever, and nine times out of ten, yeah, perfect. Let's run it. So yeah. uh, you, you sort of get to know what you're doing, and we, yeah. we did some really, really good stuff too. Um, it was actually only last week, I think it was. It was a four year anniversary. He came up to me, and said um, the editor did, and said, "Look, we're going to. It's a newspaper. It's a toilet paper shortage around the country. People are lining up for toilet paper." There is no toilet paper. Do you remember this? Yes. Yes, yeah. I do. And he said, what we're going to do is we're going to print eight pages of the paper as toilet paper and call oh. it the toilet paper edition. So we just basically had blank eight pages with perforations down it and a little watermark in the paper. And um, we printed it, which the printers thought, hey, you've made an error. What's, what's going on with these pages? No, no, just do it. It was all top secret. We brought it out. Uh, next thing you know, the BBC, CNN went global. It's actually a copy of that newspaper in the UCLA um, Museum of Print. Uh, oh, so wow. that's, that's my that's my claim to fame with that one. Yeah. That's so we've got cool. this a newspaper, and you know, I used to say it was a crap paper anyway. So hey. <laughs> <laughs> art imitating life sort of thing you know oh man that's so cool that's um 
see there's there's a that's not a thread man that's a rope you can hang on to with that one but so uh, <laughs> do, do you remember man they were dark times that no toilet paper thing man you know what i mean like very dark you know like it was like the empire was moving in or something because it's like <laughs> you know it's like i mean you know I, I, i'm not getting into the regularity of people's bowel movements and stuff and you know like whether they you know roll a scrunch or pad or you know lay down or do whatever you're going to do that's your business but all i'm saying is i'm taking it from the perspective of walking down that aisle and the lights are on the shelves are empty there's like two like a six pack and you know I don't know, someone's randomly realized they've picked up a double twin pack of paper towel and they must have come down the aisle and they've seen and and man, there's old ladies fighting with their purple hair and they're they ripping scrunches out and they're like dropping elbows and man, it was insane, you know what I mean? It's um and then you know you get those up. I mean, I don't get it, but you know, then there were those other moments where you'd be walking in and it's not like there's a spruker out the front of Woolworths, man, going, pallet of toilet paper, pallet of toilet paper here. But, you know, suddenly everyone sniffed this stuff out and they walk like all, you know, people are walking in, you know, like with their legs like bent in and they're, oh, you know, like busting, you know what I mean? Because they don't want to use like the bloody, you know, the palm leaf out the back or whatever they're going to use or their kid's T-shirt. They've like tried to be civilized, ducked down to the woolies, man. And you get these people walking out, you know, like, oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, looking you up and down with their 632 packs of toilet paper. What is with that? I never understood it, man. You know? Well, that's, and that's what we were trying and that's what we were trying to do with the newspaper, a community service, basically. <laughs> <laughs> community service. I don't know if the editor is want to admit to that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, newspaper. No, he was, he's a good bloke, actually. He, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, very good bloke. Um, <laughs> he had a lot of fun with it, the paper. I don't think I've yeah. got a copy of the, the toilet paper, unfortunately. The show oh, is bad, you know. I, I remember oh, one it? I remember one NT paper front cover and <laughs> man, it was it made me laugh. I saw it on a behind the news one night, you know, BTN, that ABC show, yeah, and they gave you, yeah, they gave you headline of the week and it was you have like a firecracker night up there where everyone can go out and just cut sick with firecrackers. And I don't know if you're going to know what I'm talking about, but yeah, well, I've got a cracker up my clacker. That's the one. That's the one. Some dude stuck a firecracker up his clacker, mate. You know, and it happened. Uh, it actually yeah. happened a couple of times. We also had why I had a bunger in my bung hole. So <laughs> it's it's it happened a couple of times. Uh, because cracker night up there is insane. It's like, oh man, um, we say it's like Afghanistan. It's all you can smell is gunpowder. It's yeah. bang, 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 bang. Lock it. Put your yeah your dogs in the house because yeah. they're freaking out. And yeah. it's constant. <laughs> you know, like, it, it just makes me laugh, man. You know, like. I don't know, people do weird stuff and maybe we're digressing here, but this, like now that I've got a man that's worked on the NQ, the NT newspaper and stuff. Now I come from a weird part of Australia in far north Queensland, man. You know, like I thought we were strange up here and stuff, but <laughs> what would prompt our man to stick a firecracker up his clacker and think that that dude or someone in that group that he was with wasn't going to have to ring triple zero. I've no <laughs> idea. It's well, uh, it was to impress a girl apparently. Oh right, I'm sure. I'm sure you know because... that's marriage material, mate. You know, like. <laughs> 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 Hey, I bet he was looking at you know, that night with his bloody bits all over the backyard. You know, <laughs> so, oh man. And that was the thing about the NT News too, um, and and uh, the editor there. I, I started having a go at the headlines, and um, I ended up um, getting finalist for headline of the year nationally twice, and then oh, I yeah. won it one year too. So yeah, I've had um, uh, with a Hobart paper actually, and it was a pretty straight yeah. lace. It's funny, you know, different what I could get away with in Darwin. Yeah. I couldn't get away with in Hobart. It's two different, wow. um, you know, like I remember Darwin, we had once, we had a um, a sperm bank was running out. So, and we've got a lot of, and we've got a lot of American um, 
soldiers over in Darwin. And, yeah. and so we went to America to say, hey, fill our sperm banks. So I had on the front page, and I got away with it too, um, we've got your Marines, now we need your semen. <laughs> and I could not get away with that down south. Like in Darwin, wow. that's fine, you know, um, but down south, no. But I, I won it with um, Hobart when they had lockdown. And uh, it was pretty straight laced by, compared to that. But it was, um, we've got a moat and we're not afraid to use it. So um, that one resonated with the people in Tasmania. And yeah, it got me headline of the year. So yeah, that was yeah. a pretty good accolade. I'll, I'll keep that one. Yeah. But other ones, were, other ones I got finalist in was when um, NT um, suddenly lockdown was over in the NT, and we did it first. So the pubs yeah. opened first, and we wrote on the front page, "Our pubs are opening. Um, the rest of the countries are still closed. Do you think we're going to rub it in? You bet we are." And then the headline was, "Screw you, we're having a brew." So that was. That got me through to a finalist too, um, as did um, John Millman, the tennis player, the Aussie tennis player, beat yeah. Roger Federer once. And so we had on the front page, uh, Millman, Rogers, Federer. And uh, that got me um, Eddie Maguire on the footy show, hanging it, handing it out, um, yeah. Carl Stefanovic in the morning, you know. So quite a few times we got onto... Um, the Today Show or whatever. Uh, the paper became quite famous back in those days. It was yeah, it was yeah. funny. It, it, uh, it, for the headlines and whatever, we brought out two books of um, yeah. headlines, which went straight to number one in the bestsellers. I probably got 10% of the first book and 60% of the second book um, yeah, were yeah. mine. Um, and, and it became quite we had We had the living room come up and see us, uh, 60 Minutes. Um, I don't know if you remember English comedy back in the day, like back when we were kids, and there was a show called Not the Nine O'Clock News, and it was Griff Reese jones Mel Smith, um, Rowan Atkinson, mm. um, Pamela Stevenson, who's Billy Conley's wife, and yep. these guys were doing this. It was just around the same time as Faulty Towers and The Goodies yep. and all those sort of guys. And um, Griff Reese jones and Mel Smith actually introduced Queen at Live Aid. They were the ones up on stage saying, Introduce, it's your majesty, the Queen. And then Freddie Mercury runs out and does the Live Aid, the famous Live Aid concert. Well, my, my editor said to me one day, um, oh, we've got somebody coming in doing a BBC documentary on us. Griff someone. And I thought, Griff Reese jones this guy's comedy royalty. So he came in for four hours with us. I did a front page of him and um, ended up finding myself on his BBC documentary. So I thought, wow, this is absolutely brilliant. So the paper was doing really well at one stage. Um, I think we won six big awards in one, me, in one year. Um, and that was for journalism as well as stupid things like headlines. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was it was back and I was I was lucky to have been there in its heyday. Um, I don't know how it's going now. I mean, as I said, I'm in Perth now, so yep. I don't know how it's doing nowadays. But I know there was a real purple golden era back then, and I was yeah, lucky yeah. enough to be a part of it. Yeah, that sounds so cool. You're making a rope here now, man. I'm telling you, it's like you can do a ladder with all these things, threads to rope. We've got a ladder. <laughs> you just need to interject it and, you, you know, just, and you're out of here. Look at you go. Ripping Look, seriously, body. hopefully at the top of the ladder is my comic book. That's the thing, the outlaw. That's the thing that I'm really um, – It's, but it's not even about doing well. It's I want to bring it out, and I think yeah. that's the, the – that's it. Um, whether yep. it sells, whether my mum is the only one who buys it, um, yep. it that doesn't matter. It's yeah. Like, well, I fudge the sale, out. mate. I fudge my sales. My mum buys a hundred copies straight off the bat, <laughs> mate. So, you know. <laughs> anyone else? I don't even think I'd be pretty no, well, 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 sold out the first run. You know, mum sitting yeah. there with a hundred copies. You know, like it's like, come on now, mum. Yeah. Well, uh, as I said, so far I've printed one. Um, and I've got it, so um, yeah, I've sold out already on my first yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Hey, there you go, mate. You're a headline dude, writer. It's how you write the headline, isn't it? You know, they don't need to it know is. what's going on behind the scenes. Like, get out of here. That's just, 
it's just a headline we want. But all right, so you're in the NT, you're cruising around, you're banging out these headlines and stuff like that. So at what point in Stu's, you know, uh, creative zeitgeists were was the the outlaw brewing man? You know, like how well, far back did it go? I can tell you, 1986. All right, hit me. Take us back to 1986. <laughs> uh, some mates and I used to collect comic books, and yep. I remember walking down, you know, after school, you're walking down the road, and you're talking about, like every kid does, you know, superheroes, and, geez, if we were superheroes and we were doing this and that, and it yep. was the very start of an idea that I then drew. Um, and that was that was called 1A100. You'd have to read the comic to understand it, but it was a it was like a license for um, what do you the superpowered police, I suppose. Uh -huh. um, and they had this 1A100 license. So I drew this comic book, and then later on I thought, how about Ned Kelly and developing that idea into something mm -hmm. new millennium Ned, Ned Kelly? Um, mm -hmm. And I drew that one, and then mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I'll morph them together. And I did morph them together and drew the comic book. And I was living in Darwin, and because it's bloody hot, I yeah. used to stash my things against the wall, my artwork, and I'd probably drawn it for a year, year and a half, and yeah. I'd got all these pages, maybe 100 pages done, yeah. and the air con leaked. And it leaked oh. all the way through the pages. All the ink went through. The whole thing completely oh, destroyed. Dude. I did sort of look at it and say, okay, well, this gives me the opportunity to improve upon it. Yeah. So I drew it again and I yeah. penciled it. And then when I hurt my back, as I said before, yeah. I sat there and penciled out a hundred pages. Now yeah. that was in 2006. I finally yeah. got to the now and I thought, I've just got to do it. So yeah. I've started inking it. I've, yeah. I've inked two issues out of the three. Yeah. Um, one of them's ready to go now. I just got to edit, edit it. They're the final edits. The next one, I just got to script a little bit better, and yeah. um, it's I've got two issues ready to go, and then I've still got to ink the third issue, which is the final one of the trilogy. So yeah, the outlaw and, and this whole concept started eighty six. The the concept started with a group of mates, just you know, like riffing and talking and you Looking know, like doing that. Oh man. What a beautiful inception for an idea. I, um, it's, you know, one of the things, and I, man, I, I really, I come from Townsville, which is in far north Queensland, which, much like the Northern Territory, is quite isolated. Um, so you don't probably have a lot of people, or I don't I had a lot less when I was younger. People that were creative, they were musical creative, or. Um, sporty creative you know however but not necessarily you know like comic book you know drawing creative um, or serious about it you know to a certain extent as you get you know you get that fire burn and you want to do this stuff like you did and i found it very difficult to find people that were like-minded after about the age of like maybe 13 14 and stuff you know so i became used to the idea of like um creating these ideas in the theaters of my mind and stuff you know like so you sort of very um uh, on, on your own, man. You're not sure what's right, wrong. You just sort of get a vibe of, oh, I'm just going to do it, you know, because I don't know anything else to do. You know, it feels good to do it. And um, the one thing with the, the community in uh, the Comex and, and, and Aussieverse and stuff with like-minded people, you know, like meeting yourself, et cetera, uh, and other creators is that I've had um, the opportunity over the last couple of years to, uh, I guess, meet people that are like-minded and also be able to i guess stretch you know like um my imagination as well out of the little caged zone that i had but i get to riff with other people now on ideas and stuff too man as an older dude and i find that it is the most unreal feeling to be just banging out ideas and then some, you can see someone else go like, oh yeah what about this and we'll do that and, and you know like it's all just coming and zinging around and then 
at the end of the day, like I think, you know, after an hour or two, you're sort of exhausted because your brain's just exploded all these thoughts and stuff. And then to be able to piece things together, it's a wicked sensation, man. And I wish I would have had that when I was a younger fella uh, like you did, you know. But the other weird thing is, Stu, in talking to you about your journey, man, is strangely similar tale because I always was drawing. Battle for Bustle was a conceptualized idea back in the late mid 90s. Mm. Came to fruition about mid 2000s. I just <laughs> did a stream of conscious three issues, I think, of comic books, no script, nothing, just like this. I've still got them. I'm a hoarder. Sent them off to some uh, that I'll call local act at the time. The dude goes, yeah, I like the idea, but, you know, you'll have to go back to the start. I'm like, oh, okay. So I had to start it again, much like yourself. Went through a whole turn. Was getting there, getting there, getting there. A few things came up. Was playing music, doing other art, and life gets in the way, you know, as it sort of does, you know, like um, just being busy, being a drunk, really, and having fun, man, you know, and traveling and shit, you know. And... Um, and I absolutely shredded my back at work when uh, in about 2018, I think, man, vertebrae five, six, and seven, boom, gone, like completely see you later. Um, had it had the hospital, had to get it fixed up and that, much like you, man. I was six to six six to eight months not much movement man real mm. you know, like what am i going to do i can't go back to what i was doing Did, you know you get down man like real down you start doubting yourself at that point dug out the box mate you know what i mean and like started drawing again you know what i mean and going back and putting things together and from you know that point on much like yourself you know the the fire started burning again you could start having a look at what you were doing and things and things that improved it was still there you still wanted you know like what you wanted when you were younger and things and in a weird way it's a very strange thing how something like that i guess in a strange way be a little blessing man you know what i mean not the pain and stuff that you go through but just how it can like give you a boy bang you know like go and do this it has to take something quite extraordinarily painful maybe sometimes to like you know spin you off in that direction you should be on but um i uh i would say man that you're going to be in for a um a good time man you know what i mean because it's like uh uh, there's a lot of people, you know, like that just love comic books and the community's really thriving, man. And uh, stories like yours are cool. It's because, um, man, you know, I'm, I'm like talking to another dude that knows about don't put a cracker in my clacker. You know what I mean? Everyone else oh. thinks it's lunatic when I'm talking about that. They don't believe me. Well, it's here. Yeah. You know, like, it's, it's real. Uh, it's real. I know. I feel vindicated. It's real. I've been carrying I'm that around. Sure, I'm years, pretty man. sure the guy who wrote that um, went over to Hong Kong and is actually an, ed an editor now for um, maybe it's the New York Times or something like that. And he, he runs the digital side from over in Hong Kong. So he, his career has gone gangbusters. Started with old crackers and clackers. But um, yeah, it's funny. I'm, I'm still actually doing it. Doing I wonder if that bloke that decided that he wanted to impress the woman of his dreams by doing that injury to himself, which created a group of people to come up with that head <laughs> headline and then years later has just spurred them off into all of these other directions, like, you know, digital editor of the New York Times and stuff. Yeah, like that, yeah. You know I mean? Like, and where you've gone with it after working on it, oh man, that is such an unusual. We did a whole, we did a whole lot of headlines actually spurred with why, you know, why I stuck a cracker on my clacker, why I stuck a bunger on my bunghole, why yeah. I stuck a coin in my groin, um, was another one. Yeah. Somebody, 
Somebody put a coin in a beer. The guy drank it, and we had this X-ray of this has <laughs> gone through. <laughs> so he's got oh. a coin in his groin, basically. Oh. Um, the sandpaper story in cricket. Remember when people got banned for two years in cricket for tampering, yeah, yeah. ball tampering? Yeah. Um, Steve Smith, the captain, and yeah. Dave Warner. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, our headline was why I had some sticky near my dicky because he pulled it out of his pocket, and that went huge too. So we did a whole lot of why I um, front pages, and that just yeah, that one cracker spurred on a whole lot of them, a whole lot of headlines. Man, that's funny, eh? With um. How, so how'd you get from how'd you get from the NT over to WA? What brought you took you over that way? Oh, I, my wife has supported me. Like when I at the NT, um, I actually left a pretty good job. My um, I I got made redundant from the paper, um, yeah. but you, in that position, you sort of met a lot of people, and then I was offered to go for a job as an advisor to the leader of the opposition in Parliament House. And I went over there for two years, and so I learnt politics, um, getting paid well, um, all good. But then my wife got a good job in Perth, and yeah. she has supported me through my career the whole way. Yeah. Yeah. My turn to pay back. We've been together 18 years. You know, my turn yeah. to give back, and um, she would have hit me if I hadn't have anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. So we packed up the house, uh, rented it out, and moved down to Perth about six months ago. So. Yeah. You know, she's doing really well. She's happy. Perth's a lovely place, seriously. If anyone hasn't been to Perth, it is um, it's sensational. It's actually, I, I Googled this, it's the sunniest city in the world. Yeah, right. More sunlight than anywhere else. It's also the most remote city in the world, further okay. away from every other capital city. So, yeah. I thought, wow, they're two big stats that impress me. But um, Perth's got everything. You don't realise in Darwin just how much you don't have when you're there for so long. I've come down here and discovered Costco and Ikea and um, a whole lot of things like uh, even, um, what's it, Aldi. Why do we don't have Aldi up there? So oh, I'm dude, thinking, wow, dude, Aldi. I was just going to say to you, they opened up an Aldi in Townsville like three months ago and it's like every man and his dog was like, it's the greatest thing that's ever happened in Townsville, man, was Aldi. It's like, I don't know, man, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I just walked past and was thinking, what the hell's going on here? I'm just, I'm <laughs> the funny thing is, too, in yeah. Darwin, whenever anyone goes down south in Darwin, they always come back with a box of Krispy Kremes. If you're <laughs> at the airport you see someone with a box of Krispy Kremes, you know yeah. they're going to Darwin because there yeah, is they've none. they got the emergency services, you know, like, you know, police cars out the front getting the Krispy Kremes, <laughs> man, whoever's ordered them and that, you know. Uh, That's funny you should say that. I remember once I was in Sydney and it was in, I think it was Kent Street or somewhere like that. They had a Krispy Kreme or a, or a donut shop. I think it was Krispy Kreme. This would have yeah. been 20 years ago. And I'm in line and there's coppers in front of me. And I'm thinking, yeah. well, this is ironic, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. They bought like four boxes of them, like 12 in a box. So they're walking out with this. And like, that is, seriously, that's just, that's the way it should be. Coppers well, in I mean, there. And they're donuts, yeah. No, I know, man. Yeah. Like, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? You know, you know what I found funny the other day? I was going for a drive down the road, man, you know, like up, 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 up yonder, you know. Um, and uh, and there's a police station on the road, and um, you know, my city at the moment, much like anywhere in you know, like Australia, I'm presuming, you know, like has a little bit of a crime, you know, like uh, rate that's uh, a little bit higher than what it was when we were, you know, we were younger, and um. Uh, you know, so there's, there's stolen cars, there's, you know, there's people being beaten for, you know, like their, their Nike shoes or, you know, like whatever. I mean, you know, just manic stuff going on, man, you know. And, you know, you, this is just me, you know, me, me being a, you know, concerned citizen, you know, like wondering where taxpayer dollars go and stuff like that. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, like pretty quiet on the street here today, you know what I mean? Car boom goes straight past me, man, straight past the police station, about 100 miles an hour, right? And you know what I see standing on the corner is a policeman whipper snipping the side of the road, and he does this. Hey, need to slow down. And I drove past that, eh? and I thought to myself, man, that's the guy. That's that's what it's like in Townsville, man. You know. So it's um, 
it's uh, one of those things, man, you know, police officer in a high crime facility, you know, city, whippersnipping the lawn out the front of his police office. Surely they would have had a Jim's lawn mowing that could possibly have uh, done that. Oh, you lost your sound. That might be you. you there I you go. There yeah, you go. I lost that, man. Yeah, right. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It was just the policeman out with the sniffing. But we'll get back to – we, we don't have to come back to that, man. You know, it was just one of those weird stories. But um, <laughs> it, 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 I'm intrigued. Now you got yeah, me. I'm intrigued. How hard did you get up to? I'll make it more action-packed for you, mate. Okay. The very start is when I lost you, about, a minute, about 60 seconds ago. Okay, I'll make it quick then. Everyone, let's see if I can get as many details in. I'm going to test myself here. Right, gone down yonder the other day, man. You know, like going down. I'm just cruising, man. And we live in Townsville. Townsville's a high, you know, high, high crime. I've got this. Right, cool. So I'm cruising down. And I'm thinking to myself, it's a nice day out here. Next thing you know, this car, man, stolen car. Woof, goes straight past me, man. You know, I'm sitting on 60. This thing gone. It's like, whoo, see you later. It's down the road. As it's going down the road, it's right in front of a police station and out the front of the police station is a police officer and he's whippersnipping and he just goes like this, hey, I need to slide down there and to this stolen car that flies by and I was standing there and I was thinking to myself, like, you know, like surely they could have allotted that man, you know, a car, you know, to be out, you know, stopping crime as opposed to, you know, perhaps give the contract to uh, Jim's lawn mowing. But, um, you know, like <laughs> these, these things are above my pay rate, mate. So it's, uh, you know, I guess, you know, it's just an observation oh. that I made, you know, one of the funny little things. Yeah, you have heard it before. You. You, you can blame technology for that, Nick, mate. You know what I mean? Like, geez, mate, come on. So I don't get my tell you, um, jokes, Nick. Working in um, Parliament House, it, it, it certainly um, opened my eyes to a lot of ludicrous decisions that are made by the powers higher up. And, um, you know, that you may get the... Oh, come on. Really? Yeah. Come to... on, brother. There we go. You're back. You dropped out on me there, you know. I oh, didn't... no. I didn't panic, Stu. I didn't panic. I... It's happened to I... me before, okay? I'm cool, man. But you don't have as much of your story to tell as what I did. So, you know, like we nearly, <laughs> we nearly doubled up there, man. So people are going to be like, what? What? They're telling their story twice now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Mine was really quick. I am baffled by what the government does. And having been in Parliament House and seen it, yeah, it completely dumbfounds me some of the decisions yeah. that are made. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, so. I know. You know, bureaucracy, man, at its finest, you know? Like, but what do you do? Um, they only want to vote, you know? It, it, uh, I... I yeah, you know, don't let me in charge of anything, man. It'd be it'd be fun. I'll put it to you that way, um, and very and very interesting. Um, and now with um, with with outlaw, get back to this part for a bit because when you when you started redrawing it and stuff like that, now you said that you only did the pencils to begin with, so you'd done the whole like first and second issue in pencils and then went back and re-inked it was was what because I, I myself i like to pencil and then ink the page i sort of change from time to time but i don't do too many blocks of pencils and stuff like i prefer to chin wag deja vu episode that's right nick that's right mate and did uh, he, did he just and, say that chi, yeah he did chin wag got <laughs> i know Hey, fancy that, you know. And, Stu, while, we're, while we were just talking about Outlaw, did I tell you about the Outlaw that drove past me the other day about 100k <laughs> an hour down the road? Anyway, no. just, you know. Oh, no. fair thing. Yeah, well, you know, I could tell you that again if you like. There you go. Anyway, Third time. No. Yeah, I know. Let's break that cycle. and Let's get back to the comic book. But, you know, um, now what, what was your thoughts behind doing all the pencils first and then coming back to the inking? I've always thought to myself that I was a penciler. Yeah, um, right. Okay. I've I've never, uh, I'm even now I, I've I've inked it. Yeah. Um, not confident as an inker or anything like that. But as I said, if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. And there can't be any excuses at the end of the day. I've just yeah, got to yeah. do it and bring it out. And if it's if 
if it's, you know, I mean, if I could be a penciler and have someone else ink me and someone else colour and that would be that would be bliss. But, yep. um, you know, usually artists are out there doing their own stuff, let's face it. Yep. They, nobody wants to ink Stuart. Um, so Stuart will have to ink himself, so, uh, which I, I did. Um, and it's, and as I said, if I don't do it now, I just will never do it and I'll never be, I'll never be entirely happy with my work. Um, yeah. And it's something that I always knew I wanted to do and I always was determined to do it, so much so that the characters in there that I made up with my friends, um, they all have a tattoo on their arm, on their forearm and on the inside. And it's uh, it's this one here. And yeah, right. one of my mates and I both got it. It's a, actually a mask. So they're two eyes and a, it's a stylized yeah. sort of mask. Yeah. I got you. Uh, yeah, and um, they've all got that tattooed on them. So I always knew I wanted to be a superhero. That wasn't going to happen. So but, but I could pretend I was. And well, um, do this you are, thing. mate. To your wife and your kids, you are a superhero, man. Oh, you know? No, like, not to my wife. No. Oh. No, she doesn't think so. No. Yeah. But um, the, the kids yeah. also, they're teenagers. Not so much anymore either. Yeah. I'm you trying know, to help the brother out, you know. <laughs> No, I've got I've got two very good kids. I've got to, I've got to say I've been very lucky. Um, I've got um, my wife is is uh, a very hard worker and um, she she's very impressive. So um, and my kids they 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 they're great too. So I've been blessed uh, to have a really good family around me. Um, what are they and I hope you're doing out law? <laughs> Um, oh, Dad, you're at the computer again, or you're at the desk again. It's um, they. It's funny, you know, when I was a, when I was when they were younger, it was oh, Dad's a cartoonist, Woo. you know. Um, nowadays, it's oh, Dad's a cartoonist, you know. It's it's not so cool for a teenager yeah. anymore for Dad to be anything. Um, yeah. You just I think, wait till they turn 18, Stu. They'll be coming to you, mate, and they'll be like, Dan, can you draw me a tattoo? And you'll be like, ah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably. Actually, my daughter will probably be 15 doing that. She's 14 now. She'll probably be asking me at 15. But, um, yeah, so they don't, you know, I think all the parents, dads are a bit daggy, you know, when after a certain period where, where, where they're superhero to begin with and they're idle, and then yeah. it gets to... Uh, you're a bit of a dag, and then I think hopefully come full circle to dad, you're my mate, you know, and, yeah. and when they get older. So hopefully that's what's happened. That that's what happens. You know, I'm like that. Um, I, you know, I, anyway, I, I like to think that's what'll happen one day that they'll turn around and actually like me again. But right now, yeah, I think they probably think I'm a bit daggy and a bit, a bit of a nerd and a bit, you know. Oh, but man. fair enough. You know it's what? True. I reckon, I reckon when you're, um, you know, when Outlaw One's out and you're happy and you're feeling good about achieving something, because man, you know, like, I, I would think that from someone that's been, you know, had an idea in their head for a long time, like me uh, and and you, just getting that damn thing out of your head is like an amazing feeling. It's like it makes you lighter, you know what I mean? Not just lighter weight-wise and off the shoulders either. It makes you feel light, like as in you admit it, you know, like you feel good about yourself because it's one of those things that you knocked on the head, mate, you know what I mean? And um, and see... Oh, you're, you're, this is a huge... This is huge bucket list stuff for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Comic books, uh, it's, um, it's probably the... I mean, no, there's a million things I still want to do, but yeah. this is the biggest... That I wanted to do to say, hey, I brought out a comic book. I've done it from start to finish. Um, I'll be happy, you know. I've done one, but there's, as I said, there's a trilogy. By the time that's finished, I'll be whew, done it, you know, and breathe a sigh of relief. Um, and I don't know where life goes to from there. I've got a million other characters, not a million. Well, I've got a, quite a few other ones to go to. But. <coughs> Excuse me. Um with the original artwork being on paper and it getting rained on, <clears throat> or not rained no, no. on, but 
you know, the air conditioner um, leaked on it. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to say, rained on, you know, if that was what happened, Stu, why would you leave your artwork outside? But, you know, like then it occurred to me it was the air con. But anyway, don't worry about me, Stu. My mind goes in weird places, man. Um, it's like I think I live in another parallel and come back to revisit myself for a brief moment. I don't know what goes on in my head. Um, and, like, did you did you move? Um, hello, SK. Bit late to the stream. Penciling, inking, it's all in the lettering. SK, yes. It is. The lettering is very important as it allows us to read the comic book SK, who is at the top of his game when it comes to lettering. If no one's ever seen any of SK's lettering, jump on to sigmatstudios.com and check out his stuff because SK is a champion. I do like SK. Known him for a long time. He's a he's a feisty, well fueled enthusiastic comic book creator and that's what i like so good on yes k you keep rocking there brother um like obviously you do you, you don't draw on paper anymore you you decided like after the air conditioning leaking <laughs> you went to you went to um digital or uh no, what, what no. Did you take there? no i'm an idiot um i've continued on with paper and um just hp oh. pencil straight onto Man. paper Come Everything on, I do. Well, you know what, Stu? Mate, welcome to Idiotville because I <laughs> am the same man. Paper for me. No. It's like, I love the tactility of it. I don't know what it is. Nothing against mm. digital artists. You've got to have the creative ability and thing to be doing it on the computer and that. Love you all. Love anyone that's a creator. But for me personally, I just like the feel of paper. I like the sound of the pen running across it, man. And the, I don't know what it is, you know. Like, but I'm nice. the same. I was. Um, I've got a Wacom tablet that sits next to me at my mm -hmm. computer, and um, I've probably used it five, six times ever. And yep. um, I've just found it. I'm actually find it easier to use a mouse on the stuff I do than I than I do that for some reason. But otherwise, yeah, everything's on paper. I, yes. I pencil paper. I ink it. Rub out the pencils. I then take a photo with it and yep. um, send that to myself in an email, which then goes through Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign to yep. to give me some uh, the colours, some um, shading or whatever else. But yeah, everything yeah. really, yeah, it's paper and. Even even this week, it comes out actually into NT News tomorrow. I still do the footy posters. You know those the footy mascot when they win the premiership and they do the yeah yeah yeah. I've the seen them. Posters. You know, do yeah. I still do them for the paper. Um, oh, I might have some old. Hang on, I might have some old ones. But um, they, because Darwin has their their footy season in the wet season, which is now the grand final was last weekend. So um, it comes out in the paper tomorrow. The the current ones, but. That's one of the ones I did a few years ago for Nike, oh, that's which is nice the Tigers. And so, yeah, yeah. yeah those, they're coming out tomorrow. But that's all penciled straight yeah. onto a paper, ink it, and then I throw it in to get all this colour or whatever else and yeah, yeah. do a bit of graphic design to it, um, which is basically, you know, all day, I, all I do is graphic design because that's my job. Yeah. Then I get home and I sit in front of a computer and I graphic design some more. It's um, I think I'm really lucky that my the thing I do for downtime and relax is yep. also the thing I get paid to do. So it's um, I don't think there's many people who uh, always knew what they wanted to do and then yeah. were able to pursue it and yep. um, get paid for it and make a living out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, very lucky indeed. Um, with the, with the inking, can just from anyone out there that um. Because, you know, lots of people watch these shows and stuff. KJB, really great chinwag fellas. Thank you very much, mate, for your continued support and watching. Um, appreciate that. Um, with the, with um, like, yeah, from a perspective of other people out there that, uh, you know, in a creative sense and, and learning, because inking can make some people nervous. It has certainly done for me, while I've inked other people's work all the time. Um, what, like, what, um, what makes you nervous about inking your own stuff? Like, what's what's your thought processes there? You think of yourself as a penciler, and then you come to the so you, you're pretty gung ho with the penciling. You're like you just boom straight into it with the pencil, but you can't. No drama whatsoever. Yep. 
But yeah. when it comes to the inking, um, I, I've never really, I haven't practiced enough. And I think yeah. it's the thing. Uh, um, so all I use is a, um, what's it called? An, a, um, an art line pen. I'm no good with a brush. I'm no good yeah. with anything like that. Um, yeah. So I've had to do everything. Well, you know, there's, so yep. everything's just with an outline pen yep. and straight onto the thing. If I want a thicker line, it means I've got to draw a thicker line um, yep. rather than with a brush where you just, you know, I can't do that. So it's yep. it's something that's foreign to me because I haven't practised it. I think people say about talent all the time and you hear it all the time and I think talent is a bit of a, a strange thing. I don't think it's, it's almost like it doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned. If I um, was never the best artist at school. Um, there were other people who were far better than me. Justin, for example, who I mentioned earlier, who got me back into comic books. He was better than me as far as I was concerned. Um, but the, the thing that um, differentiates me now from anyone else is that I practised over mm. and over and over again. Ash mm. Barty in tennis got to be number one in the world. Mm. And and sure, she, she might have some talent, but she also got up every morning at 5 a.m. and practised yeah. tennis yeah. for hours and hours and hours. So I think talent is almost, uh, it's passion, and passion yeah. equals persistence. And that's yeah. what talent is. It's really, you know, I can hold a pen just like anyone else, just like you or just like my kids and write my mm. name. Yeah. Um, my pen control is no different to anyone else's. But I've practiced it over and over and over and over. I've drawn more superheroes than I can count. I've drawn more, you know, human figures in, you know, when I did life drawing or whatever, you've done it over and over again until you get to a stage where you, I don't have to think anymore. Everything's just circles. Okay, circle for the head, circle for the shoulders, circles for the chest, circles for, the, and you put it all together and it turns into a person. And yeah. um, it's also the way you think. It's, if someone, if you ask anybody how to draw Superman, most of them will draw Superman like this, you know, with his arms, you know, in the cape, like George mm -hmm. Reeves was at the beginning of the old black and white Superman comics. But nowadays I think, okay, if I'm going to draw Superman, I'm going to have him flying at you with him foreshortening his hand out like this, cape filling half the, the frame, you know. like It's the way you think, and, and that just comes from practice. I don't even yep. know if it's actually talent. It's just practice. I think it's also st developing storytelling because, you know, I think um, splash pages per se can tell a story just as well as a panel page, you know, like so how you lay your page out and the thought that goes into it, your perspectives, the, the imagery in the background that, um, you know, because, you know, p a picture can speak a thousand words too. And splash pages generally, if we're talking a cover, a silent, you know, uh, I'll keep talking, Stu, till you, there you are. See, you, you, you see, see, see how cool I am under pressure of, you know, the live stream man, you know, like just people disappear and I keep talking. It's just what I do. Have I disappeared? Uh, yeah, briefly, but that's okay. You're oh. back then, you know, like you couldn't, you couldn't keep your way, It could mate. very well be the internet here. The internet, oh, remember, yeah. it is Perth and I've gone back. It's like time travel. You're talking to me yeah. and it's 7 o'clock here. Uh, so it's like time travel, isn't it? No. Yeah, the, man. The internet it's time, space, and space and all this jivey stuff, you know, but don't worry about any time, you know, like time travel with me because it's like, um, you know, I, I think I probably did some time traveling back in my heyday, mate, you know, like at varying times on the weekends and stuff. So, oh, you know, just mate, I, um, as time. I said, I backed back and traveled Australia. An ex, an ex art student traveling Australia for a few years. Yeah, I time traveled a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. back in the day. Yeah, and it's funny how boring I am nowadays. No time traveling at all. But, yeah, um, yeah, no, I'm picking up what you're putting down, Stu. And um, you know, it's funny how you know time traveling. You know, like um, past, future, present's all that matters. And we're sitting here talking about comic books. So. You know, it's um, just, it's one of those things, man, you know, like it's uh, the, the, the future is now, you know, um, I suppose in a strange way. But um, 
um yeah like with storytelling man you can learn uh i reckon that i reckon when it comes to comic books man storytelling is the hardest part because you can you know anyone can people can draw like the only thing stopping people from drawing every kid draws every kid paints and stuff you know what i mean they just get to a point i guess where either a they lose interest or b i suppose they're not encouraged um to a certain extent um you know like the way society is you know like i guess you're not it's not really looked at favorably depending on where you grow up in the socio you know demographic of you know like your town and stuff you know it's not really looked at favorably someone would rather you swing in a hammer nothing wrong with swinging a hammer as long as it's not at people and maybe an inanimate object that helps create something but no to the hammer swinging at people um because it's all about love man you know like we don't like that violent stuff that don't live here and um um but you know like just where you are and stuff like i guess depends on certain things but um oh man you know like I, I like comic books because it allows me to go back to you know like almost be, i guess the you know thinking about being a kid man you know like how you just let your imagination wander and run wild and you know you come up with different stuff and it's cool to you and you know like then you just learn man i guess you just you know, i guess you get a little bit tighter with things and stuff but um um well art's good but see Stu, I, I don't know how you feel man but like i've had um I've had a pretty interesting year this year and um uh for me i won't go into you know uh, loads of details about it you know um but i've had lots of time to think about things and i think i believe that the most important thing that anyone can do and in any life is to create something and whether that be a comic book or be the greatest chef in the world or something that you can put your creative juices into it can be anything you like it could be crocheting you know like doilies man that, you know like if that gives you peace and creativity helps you out then man you go ahead and do that if it's banging a hammer you go ahead and do it you know like whatever but um that's just where i'm at Stu, because creativity um you know like uh quite literally saved my life mate about uh you know 18 months ago so that's why i really enjoy um talking to people about their creative journeys and stuff man and um you know without harping on about it it's like you also see the joy that it's given you um the fact that you know like for 30 odd years you've hung on to outlaw wanting to get it out you know like yeah what do you got left on issue two? You just said you got the ink work done, so your artwork's pretty much done. You got to tighten up the script no. a little bit, you know. Then yeah, thinking, script. That's it. Then you're thinking so about. So I'm looking at having both of them. I'm looking at having both issue one and two. I'd like to bring them out at the same time. Um, yeah. Issue one's almost like an introduction, so issue two is where the action starts. I'd like to bring yeah. them out at the same time, and then uh, hopefully people or somebody, mum, mum. Might want to read issue three. Um, so I reckon I'll have them all completed within the next month or so, both of them, ready to go yeah, to print. So um, mm. you're looking at mid year. Yep. That's where I am with them. Yep. Uh, you got to remember, I also work full time. I've got a family. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's bloody hard. You know, anyone who yeah. does, hats off to everyone out there who does this because it's drawing a comic book. From the writing, the the penciling, the inking, the computer work, the lettering, the blah 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 blah. It's mm. um yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, especially so. too when like yourself, you you're learning on the job, man. You know, like because um you're not you know you weren't comfortable with your 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 inking and stuff like that, and uh, you're learning, you're getting better at that. I mean, the lettering would have been tricky, you know, because that's what like the other reason i love talking to people like yourself man who are doing it the first time because i'm not that deep in you know like i'm not that old at comic books either man you know like i only brought out my first comic book in 2020 so i was much like yourself drawing at home and you know like and it was the, the just the timing of the back you know like um going that brought me out into it um but 
hearing other people's stories because I think and it, it, I think it's important. Mate, I don't think I know it is important for creators to tell their story um, because it's so essential when there's people that purchase the comic books. And sometimes I think our world moves so quick and life moves so quick for people that they don't have moments to just slow down and enjoy things like they used to once upon a time for whatever reason that is, you know, like internets and computing, who knows, man, and the heck, you know, the hectic nature of life and stuff, you know, for whatever reason. But I... I'm not sure if people that collect comic books understand what goes in to creating a comic book. And that's why with these shows and talking to people like yourself, I love to be able to hear, like even you say that, I've got a full-time job, I've got a wife, I've got two kids, you know, and then you branch that off. I've got two kids that got to get to school every day. I, you know, like I might have to drive an hour every day. I'm sitting up here at night trying to get this childhood dream, like, complete man and i'm 53 i'm wondering what i'm doing but you know like i just got to do it you know and i just find that that's a beautiful um um story man and a credit to um your well man perseverance uh, which is a huge thing i think that everyone that has a dream should have dedication um the fact that you know, um, we've obviously, there would have been people in the time that have said, like, man, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, you're drawing a comic book again, and you know what? You've just gone out, ah, bugger off, you know what I mean? I'm getting this thing done, you know? That's an awesome thing, you know? That's just determination. Um, and um, and I like the fact that it, it's lovely to see what goes in to the page, because even though someone might get a page and go, like, no, 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 turn over, there's more to that page that you've just looked at as a reader than they would possibly understand the thought, the depth of feeling, sincerity in the artwork and the writing, the fear, knowing that you want to release it, but something's holding. Like there's just so many more things that go into a comic book page and then that's just one page. And some comic books have got 24 pages and 36 pages. And then you've got to send it to the printer. But before you get to the printer, you've got to send it to a graphic designer. And they've got to do things. And then you've got to collate it. Then you get, and like there's just a whole myriad of things. And I guess to a certain extent, before we move on to our next topic, while I'm rambling a little bit, <laughs> that's what brings me to the point of why I am 100% anti-ai creation because there is nothing about that that is remotely human and that's what creativity is if someone wants to call me out on that that is pro ai i am more than happy to have you on a chin wag and you can discuss until you are blue in the face what you believe the pros and positives of AI art is challenge thrown out come on but creation is a human based determination learn practice skill that all people are capable of and if anyone out there wants to put the time in to learn any skill you can do it too don't tap away on a keyboard and steal other people's shit and then turn around and win a competition and give artists that have slugged their life out for 20, 25 years, man, curry, you know. Don't mm -hmm. like that. They ain't cool with that. But anyway, that's my rant for the evening. Back to Stu. So, <laughs> as, I said, to as I said earlier on, when you were saying about Stu, who is Stu, I uh, mm. said I've got to create something every day. So I'm fully with you with the creative stuff. But something else creative is is also you're bearing your soul to some degree. And mm. particularly if you're publishing it, you're now up for ridicule or up for critique. You're up yeah. for um, – it, it's not like 
an AI is obviously isn't that. So mm. um, it's 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 soul. It's 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 something that's really deep and personal, and mm. and I don't and a computer can't emulate that. So I'm I'm agreeing with you about AI. I actually only recently discovered really what AI meant, and it means mm. stealing other people's artwork and putting it all together, or other mm. people's stuff and put other people's soul, other people's creations, um, yeah. and putting it together to create something, and that. To me, that's not art, though. That's not. Yeah, it's it's soulless garbage, I suppose. That's the way I feel about it. Again, I could be wrong. I'm, I've one thing I've learned in life: I've got an opinion on everything, mm. but I know nothing. So I could be wrong about everything I say, um, but that's my opinion. It's um, art, something that's personal, and yeah. it's, and it's scary. Bring out a comic book for any artist has to be, hey, I put a lot of work into this and it is now open to critique. It is now open to blah, 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 blah. And, it, um, yeah, you're burying your soul. And I found that even with uh, putting together newspaper, the, the artwork in newspapers, whether it be a graphic or a, um, you know, you're photoshopping politicians onto Muppets or doing whatever you're doing um, and you get that invariably you get the comments on um, on Facebook. Well, that's a shit job, you know, or whatever it might be. Yeah. That's still something that took you hours to do or however long mm -hmm. it took. And it's part of your... So it, it is. It takes some courage, I think, being an artist. And um, AI doesn't have that courage. It's almost mm -hmm. hiding behind a computer program. I... I... Um, I... Look, man, you know, I always haven't seen the world like I do it now. You know, I've been through some personal changes and stuff like that. But one thing that I would suggest is anyone that feels like they need to leave a negative comment about anyone's artwork, unless it's constructive, just roll on, you know. And that's like anything. It's um, I, I just... I, People need to, again, there's two sides <coughs> to the story, I guess, the sword. People should be able to express themselves in any way. We are in a democracy, so therefore, you know, like people do have a right to their opinion, which we both share. We agree. You're a you know, newspaper man and a comic book dude, and I'm a creator and, you know, like that sort of thing. But when it comes to, like, just vicious commentary you know what i mean because you may not like something of someone's or you know that sort of thing it's not necessary man you know like um that can do a lot of harm you know like and, I, think, um, I think that what i learned over the years of i mean obviously your artwork when you're in a newspaper goes everywhere and everyone yeah. sees it and um there is negatives but that usually says more about the person who made the comment than it does yeah. me or yeah. my work it's um if somebody's angry they say bad stuff you see it all the time on facebook or whatever yeah. that people are, are writing negative stuff and that is usually a troll that is angry at themselves angry at life unhappy yeah. with their life and it's, yeah. so i don't take that personally um as a graphic designer when you're doing a lot of magazines and you're working for a lot of companies and a lot of clients you get a lot of changes and a lot of critique yeah. so yeah. um I now don't take any of that personally. I, I don't think I ever really did. I was happy just to change it and do whatever I had to do. Yeah. Um, I would think the critique, though, from like that you receive from an editor or someone, you know, in the staff of say your, you know, like newspaper or magazine that you're working for. I mean, that's that's not essentially negative because I mean the people that you're working for and working with you, you're trying to achieve a goal as together and, you know, you've got to get it right. Like, I mean, you're representing yeah. someone who's paying you for, you know, like the ad or something. But I, I feel really down for people, like not you know, that, you know, um, really put their heart and soul into something, man. You know what I mean? Like, and... Look, don't get me wrong. I'm not a I'm not a good artist. I'm just someone that tries. 
You know, like I got a long way to go, man. You know what I mean? Like I got miles to go. I'll be dead before I've even gotten there, dude. You know what I mean? Like to where I'd like to be in my mind's eye. But I really love seeing people try. And I really love seeing people proud of what they've done, mate, you know. And while, you know, if you look, you know, while we can't all be Picassos and we can't all be, you know, Pollocks and get to the top of the pile and that, I think people should be allowed to express themselves creatively without some dickhead, you know, or a pack of them just attacking them for not being something that they were never intended to be other than themselves. And I think that that is something that, you know, I think that's the big thing that as a creative person doing comic books or anything, you have to like, you're not going to like it, but you'll get them. They'll, they'll, you know, like they're going to come, you know what I mean? And that's one thing you got to steal yourself up against, man. You know what I mean? But um, it's it's still not cool getting it, you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, you know, but like that. something that um, one of the old judges on MasterChef said in an interview, and it really stuck with me. He goes, that, that Gary Maher, I think his name is, uh, mm. he, he said, um, one of the old judges on the old MasterChef, and he yeah. said, um, I don't like everyone I meet. I can't put my finger on sometimes why I don't like them. Something about yeah. them rubs wrong against me. You know, I, I don't know. So it only stands to reason that not everyone's going to like me. 100%. And I thought, wow, that's profound. That's huge. And it's yeah. no reason at all that people aren't going to like me. I've done yeah. nothing to them. But there's something about your personality or whatever just clashes with somebody else. So yeah. any critique I get or anything like that in life, it's like water off a duck's back because I think the most important thing is can you sleep at night? Do you like you? Yeah. Um, uh, now, I haven't always done the right thing in my life. I'm nowhere near perfect. But yeah. I can honestly say that I go to bed at night sleeping well. That um, Yeah, I, 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 I like what I do. I try my best to do the right thing. I try my best to do my best to work yeah. hard. Um, yeah. So, you know, and you get all them together, it doesn't really matter what anyone else says. They can say whatever they want, you know. They can they can turn around with my outlaw now if I bring it out and say, gee, it's rubbish art, terrible story, blah, 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 blah. I'll still look at it and go, hey, I've done it and I've achieved. And whether it sells one copy or a million or Netflix bring it out as an animated series, Best case scenario. Worst case scenario, it doesn't sell any and I get negative credit. I've still done it and I've achieved. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what happens from there onwards as long as I've done it. I think that's that's pretty much it, man, like in terms of be proud, achieve, try your best, do what you can, don't listen to what other people say and just and just do your thing because i've said it before Stu, you agree with this if we listened to everything that everyone told us we couldn't do we just wouldn't get anything done man so it's like um, well, you know <laughs> I, I remember being told when i was young get a job in the government when you leave school yeah. it's a yeah. stable career stay in yeah. it don't go yeah. into art whatever you do yeah. it's yeah. It, there's no money in it and uh here i am having you know as a well graphic design which is still art it's just in a different form um, and cartooning, and I've bought a house, you know, so it's, you know, so don't listen. I remember actually when I was about 17, I went into News Corp in Sydney and I talked to the editor there and I said, look, here's my artwork, you know, I want to, I want to get a cadetship. And he looked at me and said, every kid does that, think of something else to do. Years later, there I am at News Corp doing front pages and cartoons and whatever else. So yeah. it's, yeah, don't listen to the negative. Follow your dream, definitely. Yeah. Um, and he, he's still actually a member of the Australian Cartoonists Association that I'm a member of now too. So it's funny that that guy who told me, no, you can't succeed, is now, yeah, almost a, a peer, I suppose, in some degree. To well, he's, more, he's far more famous that, than me. That... There was a comment, says if you can just put it back up. Aggressively relaxing. I achieved your worst case scenario and I couldn't be prouder of it. <laughs> Aggress 
what what's the worst case scenario aggressively relaxing can you um elaborate on that if you don't mind please mate thank you um sorry Stu, back to you mate i'm just not really sure what that comment means i just wouldn't mind it um being elaborated upon that's all so i could understand well, I think my worst case scenario that I was saying is nobody buys my comics and I get criticised. So, mm -hmm. but still, you know, I'm, I'm I'm happy to have, I'm happy I'm I'm happy where I am now. But seriously, I I want to be bringing out a few issues. If it means I've got to buy a lot of them, then I will. Mate, um, I I think I'll be um, stuffing them in stockings for Christmas presents. Yeah, yeah, it just jam them out to your neighbours like letterboxes and stuff, you know. It's um, I'm pretending I'm, I'm pretend I'm good. I'll sign them even. You know, yeah, yeah, sign yeah. Them. Hey, yeah, yeah. It's worth just, make, just make sure you have the, the right, you know, like uh, nickers and then the whiteout pens and stuff to get them in the right spots, mate. You know, like because uh, you don't want like black on black and white on white, or they'll never see. Yeah, that's them right. Them. Yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I think. Um, when, when is you, now? You were saying it's going to come out mid-year, and mm. you are um, you're with um, Comic Studio, so you with um, with myself and quite you know and a, and a fair few of people that are rolling through um, with comics at the sh at the moment, the studio system. Um, what's your what's your thoughts, man? Are you um, are you heading in a kickstarter direction are you printing them yourself and uh, distributing like what's with what what's your thoughts on all of that sort of thing i don't know i'm happy to be led at this stage mm -hmm. um if it means i have to do the majority of the funding myself then so be it i'll save up and i'll, I'll do it uh if it yeah. means kickstarter at the moment i'm in still in the um, creative process rather than the yeah. business side uh, okay. of thinking so, I mean, I will get into the business side, no doubt, but at the moment I'm still, hey, I've got to produce this um, yeah. before I can bring it out. So I'm in that frame of mind. But as I said, if it means I, if I go through comics, I mean, comics, it was really, it was a godsend finding um, Sizzle and these guys and you guys, um, mm. that suddenly I could talk like this with people who understood um, yeah. rather than being isolated, just sitting in my room drawing comic books. Um, now now I feel like I've sort of got a bit of a community, which it is, um, yep. but I, I've managed to join it. And, yeah, hang on, what have we got here? Uh, aggressively relaxing. Sorry, Stu, we'll come back to that. You will work really, really hard on a book. You put it out. People are polite about it at best, but I still made a comic book aggressively relaxing i thought that's what you were saying i just wanted to double down that mate congratulations for getting your comic book out and about and you know what um if you've got any copies of them why don't you you know reach out to uh the comic shop and uh have a talk to shane about uh putting it in the shop and trying to get it out to some more people mate and uh you keep doing it, bud. You keep going. And thank you so much for watching the show. And thank you very much for your comments. And uh, keep going with them, man. And don't stop your artwork, mate. Boom. No, man. Don't let the bastards wear you down. That's what I'm determined to do. Right. Just keep on striving ahead and doing what I love. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I love it, man. I'm. I'm. I'm very happy with the uh, the outcome of. Uh, tonight's show Stu and how um, our conversation has um, brought other people out to uh, say how proud they are of their comic books and stuff like that man um, it's a beautiful thing the community and um, uh, you know this is this this is the, the stuff I love about chinwag man just being able to talk about stuff and you know like with, with gas bagging and you know like anything can come up but then you you know you uh, get comments from like aggressively relaxing the beautiful things like that your stuff tonight now Stu the other one thing that I made when you said just earlier um, in that segment there um, that you you found um, CIS comics etc what what was it that um, how did how did you come across uh, the comics network 
and um, uh, comic studios, etc. Mate, like, where, where were you? Like, I'm just, I'm personally as a hunter, like, uh, like I, I've always been part of comics and stuff since I started, and it's always interesting for me to find out where people first came across it, mate. Was um, randomly on Facebook or was it YouTube or did you just one day want it? It's a beautiful thing, Peter Lane. It certainly is, brother. Um, did you um, just type in like Australian comic books, you know, like one day into Google and 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 comics came up or something, mate? How, how was your um, journey to find the community? Well, I've been cartooning and um, obviously drawing for a long time and I as I said earlier, I became a member of the Australian Cartoonist Association about three or four years ago, which yeah. I never, I always thought, it was, it's funny how you doubt yourself, I'm not good enough. And then suddenly bang, yeah, no, you're in, you know, like they, oh, thank you very much. Um, so I think I might have seen something, um, might have been Drink and Draw or something come up on Facebook. And I thought, oh, wow, who are these mob? And I had a look and... Yeah. Um, that's how it got me in. And then it said uh, Australian artist talent or, or whatever it was, apply. And I thought, okay, I'll give it a go. And I think that's the whole thing is all the way through my life, I haven't, I mean, I've given a lot of things a go. I've done a lot of things. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I've never given the comic book stuff a go. And yeah. I thought it's time to do it. And I've given it a go. And, yeah, here I am now. So it's all about... My, my advice to anybody is never be afraid to do stuff. Give it a go, uh, yeah. no matter what it is. If you've got a dream, you've got a passion, you've got a whatever, just give it a go. Don't doubt yourself. Um, in saying that, would I be in the same position if I had done it earlier? Maybe not. So mm -hmm. I don't regret not doing it earlier or anything like that. I don't have many regrets in life. Without, If I didn't do everything I have done in my life, I wouldn't be where I am now. Um, yeah. If I had done whatever to meet my partner and have my kids, I wouldn't wouldn't have them. Or yeah. no regrets, good or bad, it's led me to where I am. Um, so I don't regret not doing it earlier, but I'm just glad I'm doing it now. And meeting yeah. meeting these meeting Sis and these guys and you guys has just spurred me on to do more and more and more and more and yeah, more confidence. I suppose yeah, not that, that I'm not confident. Not that I'm not confident, but it's um, given me a bit more of a uh, kick up the ass. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's cool, man. If it means you're going to keep producing, I'll keep kicking, and I'll help kick. So you know, <laughs> like, uh, and if it means bringing out some good comic books, but I, um, man, that's that's really cool because, um, uh, you know, like the the communities it is a beautiful thing man you know so it has brought like-minded people together man and it is all about promoting australian comic books and stuff like that from everyone again i just want to reiterate from everyone the comics community is about the australian comics community it's not you know there's no fees and you don't sign up and stuff like that you know what i mean if you like comics and you're from anywhere you can be part of the community um so it is, you know, like it's it's not a clan, you know, like it's like-minded people like Stu and myself and other creators and people, you know, like talk and jive, mate, you know. like It's, it's not, it's not a cult? No, mate, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry no, to break really. it down. Well, no one told me anyway, so <laughs> you know, here I am, you know, like everyone's probably down there with candles, you know, like voodoo dolls, you know, like breaking, no one's on my back there, uh, you know. You but, and me uh, both. Yeah, man, you know, like we're sitting there, he said we weren't a cult. Oh, you know, like we start like jumping around in our chairs, we'll be in strife, mate. We'll know, you know, what's going on in the head office there. Um, but uh, no, no, it's really cool, man. Like I, I love hearing stories like yours, Stu. And um, you know what? It, it is, it, you just, you, it's where you are, you know, is where you're meant to be, man. And, um, you know, sometimes it's like I often sometimes think too, man, you know, what if I would have done it when I was early, you know, younger? But, I wouldn't have had the life experiences and um, stuff to, uh, you know, get me through to that point, man. And, um, you know, it just is what it is. All things happen for a reason. Timing is everything sometimes. And, you know, like, <laughs> you know, yeah. And um, everyone's time is different to others. So you just travel along your journey, man, and do what you got to do. Um, Stu, um, 
mate so we're looking at we're looking mid-year you'll have completions you're uh you're madly punting along you're trying to get issue three and a lot of them done so you're working hard you're learning your skills um when when we finish the show if you want after this man i'll um i'll show you in some detail about the uh markers and stuff that i use might be something that you're interested in for inking you know you may not have thought of them because it's like i've i've just learned things like that from talking to other artists and stuff like that that it saved me a little bit of time here and there that may work for you they may not but all info is good info um and you know realistically but is there um are you happy with how your chin wag has gone tonight mate oh man i'm 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 happy i don't know if there's anyone left listening but um or watching but um yeah no i'm happy um i'm happy if you're happy generally mate, <laughs> I, i'm very happy because i'm happy that um i was part of your story tonight mate and was able to hear it because it's very it's a something i don't know man there's just a whole heap of stew again i won't go into details little bits and pieces of me come out in these shows that i do but that tonight is another one of those weird synchronicities or signs that tell me i'm on the right path because the headline and i'll go over it again there's a clack there's a cracker in my clacker has been an ongoing joke and one of those things that um i don't know just with family and friends and 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 i remember being with a family member my uncle um when we saw that on uh btn and he and i were in absolute hysterics to the point where there were two men sitting across from each other in a lounge room like tears man like and you know like we thought it was the funniest cool like just we you know one of those moments and mm -hmm. and getting to meet a dude that was working on the paper at that that knew exactly oh. the you know it's just man we <laughs> there's some of the things we could get away with just quickly um mm -hmm. a guy got locked out of his hotel room in, in darwin mm -hmm. and he was naked on his honeymoon night and he was yeah. locked out for 45 minutes walking around Mindle Beach Casino um, in the hotel, completely naked, trying to get back into his room. So the headline I got for that one was walking the halls, holding his balls. And you were allowed to put that stuff on the front page. Uh, I don't think I'd get away with that the Sydney Morning Herald or, <laughs> or somewhere in Sydney. But uh, we're allowed to get away with that at the NT News. So that was, yeah, yeah I was having yeah. fun working there. I could honestly say there wasn't a day that I didn't go home laughing about something that day. It was just yeah. a, a, a room full of really talented, hardworking people who were lunatics. It was yeah, brilliant. yeah. Well, mate, that's sometimes, you know, lunacy and, uh, you know, like um, genius is a fine line, they say. And uh, laughter certainly does uh, make life travel a lot easier. And um, if uh, you don't laugh, uh, you know laugh often and you'll probably find a lot of um things will go good for you man and your days will get better all right Stu thornton the fourth monkey creator of outlaw going to be an up-and-coming release on comic studio hold that cover up for us my friend and show everyone what it looks like very beautiful i look forward to seeing it mate i also have to say i'm very very thankful and, and proud to be here with you tonight and knowing that you just did that today and to see how happy you are about it and to uh take the first steps to um you know like uh, i guess man achieving a goal that you've had for a very long time so that fills me with much joy and uh um and uh yeah i'm really 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 stoked man so very proud for you so thank you for and and I'm, I'm honored to be on this show and talking to you dude it is um yeah huge and something that i'll be putting another bucket list thing ticked off is being here now so that's good Doing Monday. yeah man <laughs> unreal eh? um 
I love talking to new people. So, Stu, I'm going to tick you off my bucket list too, mate, because it's been a pleasure to be Good on you, man. So, lovely, man. Good on you. Now, all right, so that's Stu Thornton, everyone. And uh, so as we bring ourselves to the end of another chinwag on another Tuesday, uh, I um, just want to remind everyone to like and subscribe Comex and Aussieverse on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok and Instagram. Like and subscribe them anywhere you can find them because that's how the tree grows and that's how we get to more people and that is how the community grows as well. And the community is a, is a healthy one and the more we water it uh, with people's, you know, like vibes and their energy and stuff, the better it gets and so more comics will get produced and beautiful, beautiful artwork and that's what we want. Um, now, I came across an old saying the other day um, on my way, um, you know, reading, because you all know I like to read things, and I thought this was a cool sort of a thing to uh, just leave tonight's show on. There's, uh, an old, um, there's an old thing called the 4-H Pledge. Now, I'd never heard of the 4-H Pledge before, but what it involves, it is the four H's are head, heart, hands, and health. Now, the head stands for clearer thinking. The heart stands for greater compassion. The hands stand for larger service. And health stands for better living. And some would say they are the best things to um, base your life on. Food for thought. It's up to you if it helps or not. Just leaving it out there with you in the world. So, Chinwag is always made with love and community is unity. Thank you very much. We'll see you next Tuesday. Peace. Thanks, man. No worries, man. This show good. is sponsored by the Comex Shop. Check out comex.cx for all things Comex and find out what Comex is all about. We hope you enjoyed the show.